In this video, we will look at quadratic models and how to determine the turning points. My name is Ngozi Adeleye, your facilitator, Crunch Econometrics paper. The learning outcomes are shown on the screen. We want to know the relevance of engaging a quadratic analysis, how the model should be specified, how to interpret such models, and determine the turning point. Why are quadratic models gaining attention and why are they attractive to researchers? You may want to examine if the link or the relationship between y and x is nonlinear. The theory may say they are linear, but you want to test that perhaps that relationship is a nonlinear relationship. You may also want to know if the relationship is monotonic, whether increasing or decreasing. Or is there a parabolic relationship? You may also want to know if Y responds differently as X increases in value. Or perhaps you just want to expand the frontiers of knowledge. On the screen is a typical quadratic model specification, where in this case I have carbon emissions as a dependent variable and trade openness as a variable of interest that we want to investigate its increasing impact on emissions. GDP and POP in this example or in this video will be used as control variables. Equation 1 allows us to test various forms of the trade emission nexus we can deduce five different scenarios from equation one. And our main coefficients of interest or parameters of interest are coded in red, theta one and theta two. And if you look at these symbols, it will tell you the shape of the curve. If theta one is negative and theta two is positive, you are going to have a U-shaped relationship. If theta one is positive and theta two is negative, you are going to have an inverse U-shaped relationship. If both coefficients are positive, it indicates a monotonically increasing linear relationship. If both coefficients are negative, it indicates a monotonically decreasing linear relationship. And if both coefficients are zero, it means a level relationship exists. In other words, trade in this case does not have any significant impact on carbon emissions. So these are the different scenarios that you can obtain when you specify a quadratic model. So these are the steps that you need to take if you want to determine the turning points for your quadratic model. The first thing you have to do is to take the first derivative of equation one with respect to the variable of interest. In this case, we are looking at the log of trade and set that first differential to zero, after which you find the optimal point of the variable. Since we are using a log, you need to take the anti-log or the exponent of the value that you obtain so that you can convert it to get the real value. After that, you confirm that real value of the turning point to ensure that it lies within the range of values for the variable of interest. And you can only get that when you um, do the summary statistics. So on the screen is how to determine the turning point. Equation one is the model that we have specified and equation two is the first differential. Okay, when we take um, the differential of equation one with respect to trade openness. And this is what you get, theta one plus two multiplied by theta two. Remember I said theta one and theta two are the only coefficients or parameters that we are interested in. So once you take that first derivative, you set it to zero. From there, everything is easy. All you need to do is to find the optimal point of trade. And this is what you arrive at. So this is the standard equation for uh, determining the turning point. If you get your equation correctly, you should have exactly what uh, obtains in equation four. 
But I have a caveat here. I said the log of trade, optimal value of the log of trade now, denotes the threshold of trade openness beyond which it reduces or exacerbates carbon emissions depending on the exact size of theta 1 and theta 2. So the exact size of theta 1 or theta 2 tells us the shape of the curve. And always remember or always know that equation 4 will definitely give you a positive sign. A positive sign, okay? So don't expect to have a negative um, turning point. It will always be positive. That is to the best of my knowledge anyway. So still on the turning point, so after you have obtained equation 4 correctly as I've done, so you can see here, so if theta 1 is um, negative and theta 2 is positive, this is what you are going to get. And if theta 1 is positive and theta 2 is negative, you are getting the same thing. So you can see that at the end of the day, you are arriving at the same computation for the turning point. Okay, so if you are using a log model, or if the variable of interest that you are using to determine the turning point is in log, like I said, you have to take the exponent so that you can convert it back to the real value. So you can see the exponent here. So whatever value you get here, just get the exponent or the antilog to convert it back to the real values. So thank you so much for watching. That is just a brief introduction on quadratic modeling. Please, I am interested in your feedback. Kindly leave them in the comment section below. And please refer your friends, colleagues, and institutions to enroll into the Crunch Econometrics paper series.